Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the tip and ferrule on an uncut shaft. Now, the first thing that we need to do, and this is going to be on a scrap piece of stock because it's not on an actual shaft, but it serves the purpose. The first thing we need to do is cut the tenon that will accept the ferrule. Now, depending on the type of ferrule that you use, well, the first thing that you do <coughs> is to mark where the length of the ferrule has to stop so line it up to the top of your f shaft put a mark at the end where the ferrule is going to be meeting you don't want to go too far back too far forward if you do you're going to change the length of your cue then we have to cut it down to size to equal the inside diameter of the ferrule now you don't want it to be tight tight then again you don't want it to be a sixteenth of an inch gap you want it to be a good snug fit but you want enough of a gap to where the epoxy has room to do its job so let's begin cutting the ferrule down you start by turning the machine on bring the cutter all the way to the line that you just created once you get it to that line what you're going to do is you're going to create a score what the score does is helps you have a nice finish cut. Then we come back and we begin taking our passes. Don't take very large passes, just take the little passes at a time. Until you get it down to size. Now, once you get it close to size, you want to stop it periodically to check the fitment. And again, I'm not taking very large passes. Now at this point, it looks fairly close, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test fit. Bring your cutter back, because like I said, you don't want to go too far with this thing. You don't want a gap in it. So right now, I still have a little bit more to go. So we'll take another pass, and then we'll check it again. Take your time with this. This is very important. And now we'll check it one more time. There we go. Now you notice I can't move it side to side. It has no play. It's loose enough to where it slides on, but it doesn't have a wobble to it. And that's what you're after. Because if you can slide it on freely, but it has no wobble, then you have enough space on the inside diameter of this compared to the outside diameter of this to allow room for the epoxy to be. Now, do not sand this. You want this surface to be rough. A lot of people will thread this and a lot of people will do it like I'm doing it here. I've done it this way for 21 years and I have never had a failure. Uh, yes, you can thread this, but to me it's, it's kind of overboard. You do not have to. It does not serve any extra purpose whatsoever other than a added sales tactic but nonetheless 
Now we have to come back. We've cut the we've cut the uh, diameter for this to go on to. Now we have to face off the seat where it's going to rest. Now by doing this, if done properly, you're not going to have any kind of glue line. So we bring it in again, right where that line is. Lock it down in the back and cut it down a little bit further and take it slow. Now, once you reach this wall, don't go any deeper, stop it right where it's at because if you go any deeper than that, you're going to create a cut in the tendon and that's going to make the tendon weak. You don't want that. You'll stop it right at the surface of the tenon. Go back in one more time just to make sure that it's cleaned up. Bring it out really, really slow. And at that point, you turn the machine off. You blow your dust out of the way. Blow any dust off of this. And now we are ready to mix the epoxy and attach the ferrule. Now, when mixing the epoxy, and I'll, I'll try to show you this as best as I can without moving the camera. When mixing the epoxy, I, again, I, I, I showed you the video earlier, I mean, well, the picture earlier about what epoxy I use, but just put equal amounts. It does not take much. Put equal amounts of epoxy in the cup. Use a stir stick. I, I, I use popsicle sticks. And put a little bit in the cup. I'll go one, two, three. That's enough for me. And do the same thing with the hardener. One, two, three. And then we have to mix it up and mix it up pretty good you, you don't want to under mix this because again this tip and ferrule it's it's a very important part of the cue mix it up really really good and this is actually the five minute epoxy uh, i have found that for jobs like this uh, the five minute epoxy does allow for enough, enough absorption into the wood which is something that you want you've got to have this absorb into the wood to some degree or it's going to get or it's, it's going to be a weak bond so now that we have that let that sit for a second i will turn the lathe back on and slow it down and turn it in reverse slowing it down Turn it in reverse and now apply the epoxy. When applying the epoxy, I always start from the shoulder and work my way out. And I, I'll do three coats and I'm putting pressure on this. Uh, I'm pushing it into this tenon. There you go. And that's all you need there. Let that sit for just a second so it can balance out. Once it balances out, you can put the ferrule on. Now, take your ferrule, slide it on, and you're going to see the epoxy being pushed forward to some degree. See how it pushes forward? Slide the ferrule back and forth a couple of times. Well, a few times, actually. And then push it in. Now, take, your, take a rag like this. Wipe off the excess just a little bit. That way it's not going to get onto your machine. Bring in your headstock, your tailstock. And now you want to clamp it down until this closes up. And you'll see, you don't have to wrench it down, just clamp it up enough to where you see this close up. Then tighten it. And what I always like to do is turn the machine off and wipe off the excess. Turn the machine off. Wipe off the excess. And there you go. Now, 
when I'm wiping this off, let me, let me turn this paper towel around so I don't get it all over my fingers. When, when I'm wiping this off, I'm not just wiping. There's a, there's a reason behind this. There's a method. Um, I'm starting down here. Notice where the, the bottom of my towel is. When I turn, I'm pulling up like this. And that way, you're not reapplying the same epoxy back onto the cue. You're actually removing it all in one swipe. So again, you just put it here and you pull up and turn. And you'll notice that you'll see a line of epoxy, which I've already covered up. But now we've got to let that dry. Let it rotate. Give it five minutes to dry and cure. And then we'll come back and we'll put the tip on. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're back and it's been about eight minutes. Now you'll notice that uh, this is already set up, cured and ready to go. Now, you'll notice that the shaft is running dead true. The ferrule has a little bit of wobble to it like this. Now, the reason that this is, is no ferrule, none that I've ever had, has ever been perfectly centered as far as the drilling um, to accept the tendon. Now, to compensate for that, I always order my ferrules larger than the final dimension of the shaft is going to be. This is a 13 millimeter shaft, or it's going to be a 13 millimeter shaft. Right now it's 13 and a half. This ferrule is 14 millimeters, so it's a little bit bigger than the diameter of the material that I'm working with. This gives me the ability to turn it down true and put it, make everything concentric again. Now the reason that this is wobbling again is because the center of the hole, or the center of the ferrule rather, is being trued up when you put it onto the tenon because the tenon is true to the shaft. Now all the slop is being pushed outward so you, now you see a wobble back and forth. So the next step is to face off the ferrule itself to accept the tip. So we get the tailstock out of the way, we turn the lathe off, get it going in the other direction, back toward the cutter, turn it wide open, and we face it off. Now that it's faced off, I will come back. I will don't move it back and forth. Simply go in and out about two times just to make sure everything is nice and clean and a good smooth surface. Okay? Now we're done with that portion. We blow it off. What I did there is I blew off any kind of fuzz, anything that would be in the way or prevent the adhesion of the tip. Now from this point on, you do not want to touch this with your fingertips. Your fingers have oil on them. The oil and the adhesive don't mix. So again, from this point forward, do not touch the surface of that ferrule. Instead, just to give an added layer of a surety for yourself, take a paper towel and just manually turn this and wipe it clean. And now you're ready to install the tip. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move over a little bit and show you how to prep the tip so the camera angle is going to change. Give me just a second here. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're back and what I have is a piece of 400 grit sandpaper the tip that I use and what you need to do your intention here is to scuff up the surface of this tip and you want to take any kind of protective layers off that are currently on there to do that you go to you hold the sandpaper down you put a finger here your thumb here on the outside edges and you go in a circular motion you're not pressing down like you're, I mean, you're not pressing down trying to grind the tip or sand it away. You're simply trying to take off that protective layer. And <clears throat> typically what that protective layer is, is just a thin, thin layer of wax or some kind of preservative. 
because tips have a moisture content that make them do what they do. Once they dry out, they're no good. Now you'll notice the surface of the tip is now scuffed up in relation to the outside. You notice it's a lot darker, a lot shinier. And now you want to clean this off as well. Now to do that, you take your air hose and hold the tip real firmly and you blow off the surface of this tip. Now what I've done there is by blowing the surface of the tip off, you'll notice that it has no sanding residue on it and there's no little particles of leather on the tip or anything like that. And this is going to give you the best adhesion possible. Now we need to apply the tip to the ferrule. Let me go back to the machine and we'll start that process. Okay, here we are back at the machine. And if you remember our last setting, the machine was wide open and we need to slow that down a little bit. We don't want to be slinging Loctite super glue in our faces. Turn it down reasonably slow. And what you want to do, I try to get this at a good angle so it doesn't, my hand doesn't get in the way of the camera. You want to put a very thin layer of glue on there. And then you want to put one drop of glue on the tip. Let that sit for just a second. I mean, literally, you know, five, ten seconds. What's happening is the glue is absorbing into the tip of this and also it's making its chemical adhesion to the surface of your ferrule. Now I'm going to try to put this tip on from an angle that I'm not really used to due to the camera position. But put the tip on. When I put this tip on, I'm still letting this machine turn and that's going to give it an equal spread. Once you get that equal spread, turn the machine off. Now the machine is off and I need to center the tip. Now to, to center the tip, and I like to do it manually. There you go. Once the tip is centered, lock it down just a little bit. You don't need much pressure, just lock it down a little bit. Reassure that it's manually centered. And then we again take that paper towel and we wipe off the excess turning in the other direction and there we go now we'll give that about five minutes to set and then we'll come back and we'll finish cutting everything down to size okay it's been about 10 minutes now what we have to do is turn the tip and the ferrule diameter down to the shaft diameter. Now keep in mind that this shaft is oversized. This is a 13 and a half millimeter shaft. I'm going to take it down to 13 millimeters. That's going to be my final size. So what you'll notice is a, a small cut in the shaft itself. And all that is is just getting it down to my 13 millimeters. Now let's go ahead and get that down to size and I'll show you how we finish it up. When cutting this you want to have the machine turning toward the cutter and at full speed. Again you're taking small passes
Okay. <clears throat> now what we have is the ferrule has been rough cut down to the size, to the final size. And you'll notice right here, you see a little bit of fluff on the ferrule. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but nonetheless. The next thing we need to do is get all this trued up, keeping in mind that I have to put this entire shaft back on the lathe and turn the shaft down to final size as well. When I build my shafts, I leave them full, full diameter. I put my tip, and, my tip and ferrule on, I cut it down to size, and then I come back, put it on the machine, and I will do a manual sand on the entire shaft to come down to the finished diameter of the ferrule instead of doing the opposite. Um, you're going to get a much better finish that way. So the next thing we need to do, and I, I, typically in this stage, I don't actually do a final sand and a polish and a tip shaping, but I'm going to, just for the sake of the video, demonstrate how to finish this ferrule and tip and shape the tip. So give me just a minute here and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now what we need to do, clean the machine off one more time. And we are going to shape the tip. In order to do that, we need to get the tailstock out of the way. So let's get that out of the way. Let's bring our machine, make sure this is loose, bring our machine away from the workpiece. And we need to put on what I use to shape the tip. So we need to take the tool post off, loosen it up, remove the tool post. And what I use is a radius cutter. Now this radius cutter is designed to, well, to do just that. It, it actually goes on the machine, it has a T-slot nut in the back, slides in your T-slot, and it has a bearing here, and it allows you to cut a radius. Now, depending, let me get this on here first. Depending on the radius that you want to cut will determine how far the cutter is receded into this tool post. What I mean by that is this cutter is seated in the, into the tail post of this radius cutter. Now to insert, tighten, and loosen the cutter, you have two, two Allen screws here. You loosen these up and it allows you to move it back and forth and even up and down to a little degree. And what you want to do is make sure that the cutter tip is dead center to the center of this tip. Now to change the radius uh, versus a nickel or a dime, you have a screw in the back right here. You loosen that screw up and it allows you to slide the whole thing back and forth. The farther away you slide it, the less of a radius you're gonna have. The closer you bring it in, the tighter radius you're going to have. Now I currently have mine set up for just over a nickel. And that's where I put most of my, all my cues actually. Now the next important thing is to put the tip, the center of the tip of the cutter to the center of the tip of the tip itself. So you bring it in, as it's coming in just get it kind of roughed. When you get it close, stop it, bring it forward, and get. make sure that, here's a good side note, make sure that this line here is equal to this line here. In other words, you don't want it like this trying to set it up. Get it square. So now that this line is square to this line, or parallel rather, and this tip is centered to the tip itself. Now, we have to begin the cutting process. And I'm telling you, this thing works like a dream. Now, I do not cut from here away. I cut from here toward the tip. 
that's going to give you the best finish. And I cut it with it wide open. Now what you're going to see me doing is I'll make a cut, I'll bump it one time, make a cut, then I'll bump it one time, make a cut. Machine's running wide open. I'll do a test, it's nowhere near where it needs to be. That's pretty close. Now I'll bump it one time and you'll see a little, a little bit come off, bump it again. A little more come off, bump it again. And you're taking your time, you're not pushing this, you're letting it do the work. Now that's my final size. I just go back and forth a couple times to clean it all up. And there you go, it's a simple job. It's much, much easier, more accurate than using a razor blade and doing it by hand. And it's as simple as that. Now you have a nickel radius on your tip. That's a machined nickel radius. It's not done by hand. It's not done with a razor blade or a piece of sandpaper. And uh, don't get me wrong, you can do that and it works just fine. It's just this, is, it's much more, it's much more precise. It's, it's much more faster. And you're just gonna get a more concentric hit no matter what degree or angle you're holding the cue. Now, the next thing we need to do, again, keep in mind, typically, I will have this on the machine as a whole, and then I will sand the entire thing down to match this, which is my final diameter. In this case, and for the sake of the video, I'm just going to pretend like it's already down to size, and I'm going to finish it from here out. So let's just get this stuff out of the way. You don't, none of that's needed any longer. And we're gonna finish it up. Okay, that's good enough. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the angle just a little bit. I'm gonna blow the image up a little bit more so you can get a little bit more clarity on this final part. So give me just a second to get that set up and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, this is a little bit better angle for us. Now, the final step is to finish off the surface of this, make it match the shaft, which it already does to a, a good degree, and then seal it, polish it, and finally come back and put a final scuff on the tip. And then at that point, you're going to be done. So the first thing that we need to do is to get all everything lined up. Now, again, generally, this is done with the entire shaft. I'm just, for the sake of the video, trying to show you as if it were a ferrule and tip replacement. Now, when you're replacing a ferrule on an existing shaft, you do not, again, you do not want to sand this shaft. You only want to sand the ferrule to match the shaft. The number one thing that people always do is they'll, is, I call them hacks. What they'll do is they'll take the sandpaper and they'll sand this whole area down until it's all nice and smooth. And then what they had to do, although they didn't take off much, they still took off some of the diameter of the shaft. Then what they had to do is they had to go back put the entire shaft on the lathe and they got to sand the entire shaft now to bleed and feather in to make it all look right. Um, they're going to call it cleaning the shaft when in reality they just simply didn't do it the right way. The right way is to stop right here as the ferrule begins to touch the shaft. And this is done accurately by taking that piece of wood that I showed you in the photo earlier, taking this piece of wood right here, wrapping your sandpaper around the wood. And this is 400 grit sandpaper, by the way. Wrapping your sandpaper around the wood, ensuring that it's flush, and using this to level out both 
the ferrule and the tip at the same time. So we'll turn the machine on, we'll get this leveled down to the shaft itself, and then we'll be right back. Okay, now that is leveled off, we need to blow off the dust. At this point, we can do a final sand. The final sand is with 1200 grit. And with 1200 grit, you can do the shaft in the ferrule if this shaft isn't dirty. If this shaft is dirty, do not touch this, this shaft unless they want you to clean it. Now what this is doing, one is giving a final sand, final polish, but it's also beginning to burnish the tip. Now when you burnish that tip, what you're doing is you're creating heat in the tip itself and that heat is going to make the tip or deter the tip from mushrooming so we blow it off one more time now you're ready for the polishing process now you can do this any way you like I use, I, I use a polishing compound actually I don't know if you can see it by the camera but I'll try to get it in here I use Mirror Glaze 205 Professional and I'll put it on a microfiber cloth and it doesn't take much. It only takes a drop. I'll try to get this in the camera for you, but it only takes about a drop. That's, that, that's all you need right there. Try not to let it get on the surface of this tip too much. And you're just rubbing it in, letting it do its job, which is polishing the ferrule and the tip at the same time. And this also generates heat, which helps to burnish this tip. Okay, take a clean corner of the rag, get off the excess, and do a final polish up. And at this point, you want to scuff up <clears throat> the tip one more time. Now to scuff the tip, I use 320 grit sandpaper. And, and this is going to be, de be dependent upon the tip that you have, but <clears throat> I use 320 grit sandpaper. I'll put a little bit of a concave in it like this and I'll start right on the inside edge and all I'm doing is cleaning it up you just clean it up and you're scuffing once you do that you are done And there you have it. That is how you properly install a ferrule and tip and shape the tip, sand the tip and polish the tip. And if done correctly, this will last until the cue is broken in half. It will not separate. The, the tip will not pop off. I've never had a tip pop off. If, <clears throat> if you do it the way I just told you to do it, exactly the way I showed you then you will have a hundred percent success you will have nobody coming back saying hey my tip popped off or hey my ferrules cracked or hey the ferrule separating from the shaft it's not going to no it's not threaded it doesn't have to be a lot of people you know if you ask ten different people you're gonna get ten different answers you've heard this before but you know it's a very controversial story and argument whether you have to thread this tenon or not and again, in my personal professional opinion of 21 years, 
you do not have to thread this tenon. Again, the only benefit that I th that you can gain from threading a tenon is that you're going to have more glue groove to uh, a more surface to to have glue into or your epoxy rather in. But even that's irrelevant because unless unless you have I don't really know how to put it. Let's just say this. It is not required that you thread that tenon. I do not thread my tenons. I don't have to thread my tenons. Most people don't thread their tenons and it's just not needed. It's overkill. If you, if you do it properly, it's not going to fail. Uh, I give a lifetime warranty on all of my cues and I do them this way. I have never had a cue come back to me because of a failed tendon or a failed uh, ferrule or a failed tip. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to you guys watching the next one. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions uh, down in the comment sections of where you purchased this video, uh, leave your responses, leave your comments, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.